Indeed being threatened. She can transform Break into a an actual leopard. Man, here. she's so cool. I might just end up memeing it and uh, play her as the main DPS. Subscribe, please! It is time to YouTube this up. Let's see. Let's just have a look at what uh, the Genshin live stream uh, looked like. Where, 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 Genshin, come on, where is it? Oh, that's Genshin Impact. Yata! What do you have to say, Mr. Genshin? Kiwi! Kiwi's crying. All right, half an hour. Let's have a Lucy's. Kiwi! I've had concerns for a long time. Malika's plan needs too much time, and too many things can go wrong. So, specifics aside, the Pyro okay. Archon confirmed the Gnosis can resolve the crisis, but it comes at a huge price. Okay. This is a distress signal for the Masters of the Nightwind. So Auroron was indeed being threatened. What? Great goal, Malika. We're already off to a rocky start here. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me crisis, go back. But it so the Pyro Archon confirmed the Gnosis can resolve the crisis. So does that mean that she's going to be using it? Or that she's trying to do something else? It comes at a huge price. This is a distress signal. I feel like um, by using the, the Pyro Gnosis, there's probably a, a thing like... Uh, because she's talking about a huge price, right? And we know that obviously the, the Sovereign is not here anymore. Or at least is not the one like reigning over the power of, uh, of uh, Pyro, right? So the, the high cost might be... Um, giving back the Gnosis to the Pyro Sovereign, potentially. But that would mean that essentially there can't be any Archons anymore, right? Uh, especially with uh, how like the Eternal Flame functions. So I think this might be the problem. Oron was indeed being threatened. So here, what, what this tells me is that we know from the cinematic that Oron seemed to be working with... Uh, El Capitano, right? Because in, like in a cinematic, they stand together when Mavrika goes and confronts him. That was like in one of the trailers, right? And during the fight, when El Capitano got wounded, um, the fight was interrupted by fog, uh, like this huge gust. And that was a member of the Nightwind, right? So maybe he's not working with el capitano willingly maybe the like maybe el capitano or the factory in general just has hostages or at least he is in a situation where he doesn't have a choice for the masters of the night wind so auroron was indeed being threatened she can transform into a uh, an actual leopard man she's so cool I might just end up memeing it and uh, play her as the main DPS. She has some Geo Infusion if you keep her on field. She's so cool! If she's trying to finish that ancient name, there's only one place she could go. His soul is temporarily restrained by us and it appears to have become more fragile in the process. His soul? It could be the, the dragon soul. Ooh, that's a new mob. Hi. Yeah, that's a new boss, definitely. In the event that a confrontation becomes inevitable, I'll stall the captain while you advance. Mm -hmm. And once you've learned the truth that the Pyro Archon Malwika would never willingly share with you, you may just find it in your heart to consider my proposal. Okay, that's scary. What does you that mean? Have to make the decision for her. Here. A land without the Lord of the Night, without the protection of the wolves, is doomed from the start. Okay, so here... Does that mean that he wants to get rid? Oh, I understand. So essentially, what I understand here is that, like, you know, the, the, the Night Kingdom... Um, the Night Kingdom is like the, the, the World of Dream or whatever, where there's, like, the whole... 
um, way up and the name thingy. It kind of essentially functions similarly to um, spirit veins. But actually, the spirit vein don't exist in that land, or they are too weak. And that's why we have the Night Kingdom. That's why they have the Night Kingdom. That's also why if they go outside of Natlan, Natlan natives actually start losing their memories and stuff. Um, and the reason why is because they're not connected to the Night Kingdom anymore. Um, because essentially, the spirit veins are connected to the, to the, to the tree. Um, the, the tree of wisdom, right? It's connected to... I don't remember its name. Anyway, you know what I mean. So the thing is that I think... Um, they don't have spirit veins because I think the whole process was blocked or the, the tree was hurt during the, the, during the war, like 500 years ago, whatever. So what's possible here is that we know that the fat tree are actually working to replace the spirit veins. Is it the fat tree or is it the... Yeah, it's the fat tree, right? They're doing experimentation of that kind. Uh, but there's also, I mean, to be fair, there's also the abyss doing that. But it seems that it's possible to potentially create new spirit vein, like artificial spirit veins, right? So I think that in this case, because he's saying you presume too much that without the Night Kingdom, they're doomed to like perish or something, is that maybe what Capitano is implying here is that there's a way to recreate new spirit vein to replace Night Kingdom. Humanity survival is worth it. I wonder. Very curious. Big war. We don't build my Vika. What? Why do you want to kill Mavurika? She's a good lass. To be fair, what's crazy here is I think my, my Mavurika in 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 Himiko fashion will accept that death if necessary. Oh my god, I'm so scared. All I wanted was to see her again. Could that be Mavrika's sister from 500 years ago? That's possible. If I could go back, I would do whatever it took to ensure their survival. If I could go back, I think this means that El Capitano is indeed super old and from that time. I'm ex expecting uh, El Capitano to potentially be like the brother of Shabalanke or something like that. This, there has to be something because I think when we go to Mesopotamia, Mesopotamian uh, theology and history and legends and folklore and whatnot. Um, they were like two brothers that kind of defied and stole the flame. So it's very possible that uh, Shibalanka and Capitano are linked in some way. Experience something similar, Malika. You should know exactly what I mean. Okay, okay, okay. Damn! Oh, Sid Lali is looking great! Yeah, this has to mean that Sis Lali is, like, one of the Chosen. Uh, let me see something, because I, I think... Did I see Ororon here, or did I did I dream it? Because here we see her. Mavrika is here. What about before that? No, I'm not seeing him. Maybe it was earlier, but I don't I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I guess I dreamed it. I dreamed it. Hey ZQ, what's up? Ooh, would you look at that? Alright, I'm gonna skip that. The redemption cones are all available on their official Twitter. So you should check it out there. But here we're gonna be skipping and going straight to the good good. Yay! Hello, travelers, welcome to the Genshin Good. Impact version 5.1 special program. Why do we have some random Gabe, members of the adventure the Impact localization thing. team? And I'm Kai. I'm also from the Loke team. Okay. And we'll be your hosts for today's program. That's random. We're usually translating Genshin Impact behind the scenes, so it's an honor to talk about the latest update. Oh. I'm pretty stoked about what's coming in version 5.1. Yeah, me too. Totally. I'm sure that everyone else is just as excited to find out about the new update. Then let's Bet. give them what they've been waiting for. First up, Shilonen will yes! be our new playable character in version 5.1. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Uh, Ardent Flames Forged the Souls. 
I mean, we know she's a, uh, she's a blacksmith, right? Or smithy. The peaks resound golden veins gleaming. A name engraver, the Nanat's uh, Kayan. She's especially skilled at finding a good balance between the heavy responsibilities of her job and living well. Uh, she is the, the hero from the tribe of the Children of Echoes, right? So the same tribe as... Um, uh, what's her name? Um, the Volcano Rabbit. Shuonen has a lot going on. Where should we start? Yeah, we should probably start with her profession. Of course. Shilonen is a famous smith from the Children of Echoes, one of Natland's six tribes. She forges all kinds okay. of goods, like jewelry, vehicles, and weapons. You name it, and she'll make it. Cool. We've already seen some of her creations, actually. Oh, really? She created the Pyro Archon sunglasses and Kachina. Kachina, that's her name. Twirly. Hey, we'll world. Be hey, everyone. Even more of her handiwork, including the weapons of some yeah, of our new upcoming Yeah, this is the big strike thingy going on. Yep. She's forged so many creations. She has. Yes, and they're all really varied. She commands so much respect in that land, but her job is really challenging. Yeah. What's her secret? Shilonen is a really skilled smith, but her work mindset is the true key to her success. Okay. As she likes to say, if you overwork yourself, then your mind and body will settle the score. Yep. You can't accomplish much while you're burned out. That's why she believes that it's important to take breaks. True. So what does she do during her time off? Well, for one, she likes to sunbathe in the tree branches. Of course she does. <laughs> that's right. We saw her doing that before. Yeah, in Indeed. the ignition teaser. Yes. But that's not her only hobby. She also likes to listen to music. Oh, yeah. That's a popular pastime in her tribe, right? Absolutely. See those earpieces? Oh my god, I like music they too! actually connect to a record player. Cool. She oh. made them so that she could listen to music during her work breaks. And the musical beats help her keep up a steady forging rhythm. They're pretty handy. Wow, it seems like her skill set is really convenient. Mm -hmm. Man, I love her. Smith, her skill set also comes in handy for exploration. Oh. Shilonen actually forged some special equipment that yeah, makes it easier to get Yeah, special roller skates, baby! Let's take a look. Great. Man, she's oh my god, she's gotta be the hottest character in the game. Ooh, she's seen her Night Souls blessing attire. Cool. Yeah. Wow, she makes climbing look so easy. She's yeah. so cool. She can even stop in the middle of her climb, <laughs> taking the surrounding view. Nice. I bet she finds a lot of the inspiration that way. For sure. When she finds something interesting, she immediately springs into action. Dude, she's so cool. Jesus! <laughs> oh! Oh. <sighs> She's intense. Yeah. Speaking intense is an interesting let's euphemism. Battle mechanics. She learned. Uh, let's see. Shilonen possesses three geo samplers. For every power, hydro, cryo, or electro character in the party, a geo sampler will be converted into the corresponding elemental type. When the sampler is activated, it will decrease the corresponding elemental res of nearby opponents. When Shilonen is under the Night Soul's blessing state, the geo sampler she carries will always be activated by default. Okay. Should she have at least two samplers that have undergone elemental conversion, Shilonen will gain Night Soul points upon hitting an opponent with a normal attack. When Night Soul points reaches maximum, Shilonen will consume all the Night Soul points to activate all samplers she has on hand. Okay, so... For every Pyro, Hydro, Cairo, or Electro character in the TP. So anything but like Dendro, Geo, and Adamo. Uh, so her she will get one of each type potentially so let's say you have one hydro one electro and one pyro her three sample will be of each type okay and this decreases the enemy's elemental resistance okay when jilona is in the night soul blessing state the geo samplers she carries will always be activated by default Okay, so essentially, yeah, but the thing is that, like, that means that she doesn't have Pyrohydro or Cryo, so I don't know what this says that. Uh, should she have at least two samplers that have undergone elemental conversion? So essentially, they're saying that, like, in a Geo team, for example...
Because it, okay, it says she has three geo samplers, but they are converting to the corresponding elemental type as for every power hydro cryo. So unless you do mono geo, then she won't have geo samplers anymore. Like, unless you do, like, two Geo. Like, let's say you have two Geo Power Hydro, for example. Then in that case, her Geo Sampler will automatically be activated in Night Soul Blessing State. Now it says, should she have at least two samplers that have undergone elemental conversion, she will gain Night Soul points upon eating an enemy opponent with normal attack. When Night Soul points reaches maximum, she will consume everything. Okay. Uses special equipment in combat, too. See those three objects next to her? They look like gems, right? Mm-hmm. Well, those are samplers that were crafted by Shilonen herself. Whoa, those are super shiny. They really suit Shilonen's design. Yeah, and their color can change. The samplers are aligned with Geo by default, but their element will change when you add Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro characters to your party. For example, if Muolani is in your party, then one of Shilonen's samplers will become aligned with Hydro. And when Shilonen activates that sampler, she can reduce nearby enemies' resistance to hydro damage. Oh, okay. So how does she activate the samplers? That's the question. I assume she activates them by undergoing Night Soul um, uh, Blessing State transformation. Well, how do you activate the sampler? There it is. It's simple. When Shilonen has at least two samplers of an element other than Geo, then hitting enemies with her normal attacks will build up Night Soul points. When Night Soul points Wait, are what does he say? enemies with her normal attacks will build up Night samplers of an element other than the samplers. It's simple. When Shilonen has at least two samplers of an element other than Geo, then hitting okay. enemies with her normal attacks will I was build wondering if they were saying like you need like two s samplers of the same color. So like more, like two Hydro or two Pyro or two Electro, but no, it's just two that are not Geo essentially up night soul points when night soul points are at their maximum level then all samplers will be activated this reduces the corresponding elemental resistances of nearby enemies okay. i wonder if like if you stack the same samples the defense shred or the defense um yeah it's a different shred is like stronger so let's say it's like let's say it's 10 percent per sampler but if you run like a Let's say three hydro character. Is it gonna be minus thirty percent? Okay, I think I understand her kit now. Nice. Shilonen's abilities work best when there are at least two different hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro characters in your party. Once you have an optimal team, you see they say when you have at least two. So I think this means that uh, the elemental res shred is probably capped at two samplers. So I think if you go. If you go two hydro or three hydro, you get the same amount of elemental res. Otherwise, it wouldn't say it that way, right? You just need to activate the Night Soul's blessing state and max out her Night Soul points. Exactly. These skills allow her to reduce multiple types of elemental resistance. Of course, Shilonen also works in teams with multiple Geo characters. If Shilonen's samplers are aligned with Geo, then her normal attacks and plunging attacks deal greater damage instead of rapidly accumulating Night Soul points. Oh, really? Shilonen also has a talent that should be helpful for exploring that land. When Shilonen is in your party, triggering a Night Soul transmission with one of your party members will allow them to regain a set amount of Phlogiston. Cool. Man, Shilonen's she's so cool! Elemental burst deals AoE Geo damage, and if she has at least two samplers of an element other than Geo, then her burst will restore HP to active characters at set intervals. <sighs> She's right. a healer too! That's all we have for Shilonen's skills. Yep. Oh, I forgot to mention. So best is three samplers, like four different elements in a team. No, I think the best is gonna be two of the sa same element. So you will always have three samplers, but I think the best is gonna be have two samplers of the same element. So like, let's say two Hydro and one Pyro, or two Pyro and one Electro, or two Electro and one Pyro. It, like, you want two samplers of the same element, I think. Mention something important. What is it? <laughs> ancient names. Shilonen inherited the art of ancient name forging. The Pyro Archon even appointed her to forge an ancient name for the Traveler. Ancient yeah, names right, that's gonna be happening in a story. Heroes, Ooh, right? that's hype. It's amazing she can forge something like that. Exactly. Natland cherishes its ancient names. 
Few have the honor of being recognized by past heroes, and even fewer individuals have the ability to forge ancient names. Be sure to check yeah, out Tribal Tomer. Chronicles Nanatskayan in version 5.1 to learn more about Shilonen and ancient name forging. Hell yeah! And, just like in version 5.0, Travelers can earn extra primo gens and level up materials by completing Shilonen's tribal chronicle. That, that, I love that they did this, by the way. It's just like you get some extra primo. Of course, this is kind of classic from like those quests. But what I really love is that they actually give you resources that you need to level up her materials and like her talents and ascension stuff. This is so good. It really makes like building new character easier. Like, it's not incredible or mind-bending, but this is nice. I think the material you get can allow you to get her up to level 60 or something. ...and level up materials by completing Shilonen's Tribal Chronicle during version 5.1. Speaking of forging an ancient name for the Traveler, at the end of the last Archon quest, the Pyro Archon made it sound pretty difficult. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. The Traveler is an outlander, so their adventures Indeed. in Netland aren't recorded in the Night Kingdom. If those deeds aren't recorded, then it's going to be pretty tricky to forge an ancient name for them. And see, again, this is why I keep saying that the Ninth Kingdom works essentially the same as the tree, right? What is it? What is the tree called again? Genshin Tree. It's not the Tree of Dream. What? Well, Soul. Ermin Soul. So yeah, I was saying like, see, Ermin Soul records everything that happens, right? through the spirit veins and the night kingdom is specifically in Natlan and it records everything that happens while you're in Natlan and that's why like every single Natlan uh, people everything they do is recorded in the night kingdom but if they're not in Natlan where the night kingdom doesn't have a hold essentially they just start losing their memories because the memories are recording the night kingdom right and so the fact that they're saying because She's an outlander. She doesn't get recorded in the Night Kingdom. And this is the same way that what we're doing is not being recorded in Ermin's Soul either. So this is proof that they essentially work the same. The Night Kingdom is essentially a replacement for Ermin's Soul because Ermin's Soul, um, essentially spirit veins, did not extend to Natlan. And that's also why um, nobody in Natlan actually has a pyro vision. Um, because it's just not the elemental pyro is not strong enough, right? There's only the sacred flame, so only the pyro archon is able to use pyro. A traveler. Yeah, no wonder the pyro archon said nobody's ever done it before. During the version 5.1 archon quest. I I'm sorry, by the way, I'm just so hype about the story. <laughs> We'll have to figure out how to overcome that obstacle. We'll also get the chance to meet Sitlali from the Masters of Yippee! the Nightwind. Sitlali? People were saying that she was going to be a four star. Um, and I was like so disappointed. But apparently she is going to be a five star. Uh, and I love her. I think she's so cute. extremely knowledgeable about the Wyub. So she might be able to turn the Yeah, exactly, Tomer. Yes. Of course. What? Look at her face! Oh my god, I love her! The Traveler's ancient name won't be the only... Is she drunk? <laughs> the threat of the Abyss remains, and it seems like Auroran, oh. a mysterious member of the Masters of the Nightwind, is working on a secret plan. Uh-huh. There's so much to look a forward to. A super secret edgy Travelers plan, am I right? also earn extra primo gems from this Archon quest, right? Oh, Electro confirmed. Also, look, he has these little uh, bat ears. He's a bat confirmed. I mean, this is what people expected, but now we pretty much have confirmation. You're this exactly ear is 100% right. a bat here. Just like in version 5.0, travelers can earn an extra 500 primo gems if they complete the Natlan Archon quest Act 3 and Act 4 during version 5.1. Yeah. I like that they're doing this now. Like, whenever the patch comes out, you get some extra resources for doing them when it comes out. So, like, just do these missions, do the Archon quest before the next patch. That way we, you get, like, Essentially, like, half a pool. Well, that's not... It's a third of a multi-pool. It's not all. Extra rewards will also First be available for mail, by the way. True. Land during version 5.1. Oh! Travelers can earn a total of 400... Yeah! So I saw that in a dev talk, but I, I didn't do a video on it. But essentially, um, on the release of a new area or a new place, you get increased... You get some Primogem rewards for exploration. Um, but this is temporary, so you need it's to incentivize people to do uh, exploration essentially, and this is nice. 
yeah, it's not going to be a shit ton of Primogen. It's going to be like uh, 300 or 400. Uh, it's probably going to be 400 with like the 80%, right? But still, it's more than we had before. It's a little bit more resources. For free to play, this is going to be quite important to do. So yeah, this is Extra great. Primo gems by completing related world quests and increasing there it is, 400%. exploration uh, 400, sorry. Travelers who already reached the required amount of progress in version 5.0 can directly claim the rewards during the new version. Yeah, because we but don't, don't worry if you're more We're not getting a new area, but this is going to work retroactively for 5.0 essentially. But I think like in 5.2 we're probably going to get a new area so we can expect some new uh world quest and regional exploration progress stuff. This is great act about exploring new regions. These exploration rewards will be available for two versions. That means you will have all of version 5.1 and 5.2 to satisfy the conditions and claim the rewards. Yeah. Can we expect similar okay. rewards to become available as the map expands in future updates? You bet. There it Limited is. Time exploration you bet. rewards will be offered for all future Netland areas. Yes. Awesome. Each time a new region is released, the exploration rewards will be available for two versions. That way, travelers should have enough time to explore the new maps and claim those extra That's good. Gems. Two version Each is good. Version comes with a ton of so, for example, 5.0 and 5.1, and then like 5.2 and 5.3, for example. This is great. Or events. So you'll definitely have a ton of chances to work towards those rewards. Heck yeah. We should give the travelers an example. No problem. In version 5.1, travelers will be able to take part in an event called Aphid Treasure Trace. Ooh. They'll work together with Shilonen to track down and capture phlogiston aphids. It's not as simple as I make it sound, though. These creatures have been corroded by the abyss, <gasps> which caused them to grow I'm sorry. unnaturally large. <laughs> Wow, is nothing safe from abyssal corrosion? Insane! Natlin's a booba! Really Insane! Tough time. Tell me about it. Luckily, the I'm just, this is a joke, are still reversible. Start by unleashing attacks with your characters, so, then use Shilonin's insect net. I, I really try, like, I try Kirich as gameplay and, like, some stuff when you get to, to try for free. Inside of them. I'm not gonna lie, I hate his gameplay. Travelers I hate his gameplay. I'm so sorry. Like, sure, I'm not used to it, but, like, spinning around my enemy with the hook he has, it's... I don't like it at all. I'm so sorry. I just, I can't. All challengers. If you manage to beat this new boss, then you can earn special materials. It's like, would... it, it's supposed to give you more freedom, you know? It's like, hey, you can like zip around, it's crazy fast, and you have like so much mobility. But like, you're just spinning in circle around one enemy. I feel like I can't actually move that much. I, I'm just like, man, this is annoying. I, I don't want to spin in one specific circle around my enemy. I don't like it. Love I'm sorry, chat. Hands on the parts of that automaton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we introduced our new character and the new boss. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the event wishes. In the first half of version 5.1, travelers can look forward Chiori to... Chiori and Gilolan at the same time? Ooh, you know what's crazy? Oh my god, this is such a good banner. You know why this is such a good banner? Because the weapon banner is gonna be crazy. Uh, Chiori weapon. Genshin. No, can you just... What's it called? Let me, let me show you. Because her weapon is the Uraku Misurugi. And this weapon gives like uh, crit damage, right? Um, and she also gets, like, uh, normal attack damage is increased, elemental skill damage is increased, um, and uh, it also increased the world's defense by 20%. And the thing is that this weapon has crazy crit damage scaling. I think at max level, it's like, yeah, look at that, 88% crit damage. This weapon is actually bananas. It's a, gr it's a good, like, stack stick, stat stick, sorry. It gives just, like, basic attack damage, elemental skill damage, and um, and if you have a dual character in your team, uh, it actually increases these to 32% and uh, 48%. And on top of it, you get free defense, which is nice, right? And the thing is that those two weapons, this weapon and um, Shilin's weapon on the same banner is actually crazy. Because, like, 
let's say you actually don't win the 50-50 and you end up with uh, Chiori's weapon. This weapon is still like amazing and you can even use her on Jilonen if you want your Jilonen to have like more crit damage. So even if you don't get the specific Jilonen weapon, you still end up with a great weapon that works on her. Oh my god, that's such a good banner. Now I'm just thinking of just pulling for the weapon. Because like even if I don't get the weapon, I still win. And her weapon looks great, by the way. Let's just be real. Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. Vent wishes for Shilonen and Chiori. A new five-star sword, Peak Patrol Song, will be featured on the weapon Oh, band. man, and the in pain. the half of version 5.1, We'll have returning event wishes for Nahida and Hu Tao. Okay, yes. good news. Here, I don't want to pull. I don't care. Yeah, I already have my Hu Tao C1. I know Nahida is, like, super strong with Constellation, but she's already, like, super strong C0. So, yeah, this is a full skip for me. I already have Staff of Homa. I don't care about the weapon. I don't think it's necessary. I feel like weapon, it, it has to be, like, very specific. Like, either it's a character you absolutely adore, or it's, like, a DPS. I think getting weapons for, like, support is, like, it's pretty this way. Do you care... Do you really want to pay 200 bucks to get, like, a support weapon? Eh? And new eh? four-star weapons will also be oh! added to the weapon. Oh! New four-star weapon? Sword, pole, arm, and claymore. That's interesting because we already got a new sword, right? Oh, although, never mind. It's only craftable that we got. Okay, this is nice. I wonder what they do. Okay. Keep an eye out if you're interested in uh, In terms of design, I don't really like this one. I don't really like this one. I think the pole arm is cool. I think it's the only one that looks okay. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? They actually look like weapons that could be in Monster Hunter. It's like the 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 bony look and rugged aspect to them. Oh, I can't wait. But it's about time for our first break. See you soon, travelers. See you soon. I wanna know what they do! Ah! I wanna know what they do! I saved solely for Shiloh and so I have to skip Nahida. Let's see, like, theoretically, okay? Let, let's theoretically, theoretically think about what could be, what could be the weapon for Shilonen. Like, in theory, what, what, could, what could her weapon do? I don't know. So, in theory, the weapon probably gives you a lot of defense, right? Probably. Probably gives you a lot of defense percentage because she scales off of that, most likely, right? Um, probably gives you up to, like, uh, I don't know, like, 82% defense, which is crazy, right? Um, and she can probably like increase her own defense and total damage. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. So yeah, she probably also buff her team with uh, total damage. That would be crazy if that were the case. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that could be cool. So like either you get like a good weapon that like, is gonna buff her defense and also buff her team, or you get a weapon that is just overall pretty good and uh, also give you like a, a shit ton of crit damage. So they're both like amazing. For the other weapon, I don't know, maybe the pull arm is gonna give like some ER or something. Um, and Welcome then I think like maybe the the great sword and the, the, the sword weapon just give you some uh, attack percentage. I don't know. I, I would just imagine this is what would, is gonna happen. Uh, but who knows? It's a mystery. I'm sure that everyone can figure out where we're at. <laughs> yep, it's Sumeru City. Things are looking really festive. Right! They said it's gonna be another uh, Soup Sour Festival. Because That's cool. we're celebrating Nahida's birthday in version 5.1. I still remember how the Sub Zero's festival there it is, Sub -Zero's. during the Heck Archon yeah. Quest two years ago. Yeah, it went to the shit. She couldn't <laughs> celebrate her birthday because the Grand Sage trapped her in the sanctuary <laughs> yep. of Sorostana. Right, and Nahida's character teaser was. Uh, I feel like they say she needs to use her ulti a lot, or since she had those samplers that make her scale on ER, or make shield strength in her advancement bonuses. Um, for a weapon, no, she scales of defense. A weapon is gonna be defense related. Um, I think you will probably need to build some ER, but honestly, I don't think her ER requirements are going to be as bad as some, like, rough characters. Um, I think it probably can survive with, like, 160% ER or something like that. Like, between 150 and 180, I think would be good enough. She's not going to be, like, a, a Shangling, for example, who needs, like, a freaking billion ER. So sad. Especially during that third instance of, when I woke up, I was riding in a flower carriage. The sudden change of music was so heart-wrenching. True. Definitely. I don't remember. The Traveler really helped out by exposing the Academia, and Nahida was able to earn her people's love 
but we all feel like she deserves a true birthday celebration, true. right? True! Yeah, absolutely. So, in the version 5.1 event, chromatic ode of candies and roses, travelers will hey! get the chance to give Hey! We get a free Candice! Celebration that she deserves. Can <laughs> you right, feed these finally. nuts? You, I don't yeah. know. Actually, can I have a few screenshots can that these I can nuts share in your mouth? Everyone? There it is. Do you yeah, want no, to I did take it. a sneak peek at this Subzerus festival? Yeah, let's do Raiden it. Raiden needs an unbelievable number of ER. Well, Raiden is different because she needs ER, not because she requires it for her ulti. She needs ER because she scales off of it and gives bonus to her team. That's very different. I feel like that's different. She scales off of ER, so obviously she wants as much as she can, as, she, as you can get. It's not like she needs it. Whoa, that's a lot of people. It looks like there's... It looks like they're making plans to do something terrible to Paimon, and I hate it. <laughs> Secretly discussing something. This year, the Academia is organizing a birthday oh celebration unlike any other. Think of it as a small way to make up for their past mistakes. Uh huh. Plus, the Traveler has teamed up with a bunch of friends from Sumeru to prepare a special surprise for Nikita. Wow! Oh, I can't wait to see her reaction. We like surprises course, here. A surprise is only as good as your ability to keep it a secret. Oh, so shit. don't give it away, travelers. Okay. The flower carriage is another important part of Subzerus Festival. Yay! This year, our Sumeru friends have created a miniature carriage to simulate the parade. That way, it can go off without a hitch. Cool. <laughs> That's so nice of them. And the traveler will serve as the knight of flowers during the real parade, escorting the carriage along the route. That's wow, cute. I so like it. The traveler is like Nahida's protector. Yeah, it looks like the Aranara are. All wow. Scarum Meow is gonna be offended by that. So involved. hundred percent. Gonna be like, what the freak? To learn more about this year's I'm the bodyguard. Festival, including the birthday surprise. Then be sure to check out the event during version 5.1. It's time to make some memories sweeter than candied Agile Nak nuts. What? Travelers can also look forward to different what? types what? of gameplay during the event. <laughs> what? Remember the parade simulator that we saw in the earlier screenshot? Travelers can take it for a spin during the event. Rocking You're gonna try to keep it secret for someone who can the read your mind? I the mean, let's be real. Nahida doesn't do it unless she feels like she has to. Flowers as possible. Because but she doesn't want to invade way, people's privacy unless there's a, a good score. reason for it. Nice. In the second event, in a reflection of reality, but like, dreams, yeah, I mean, she could. travelers will enter unique dreamscapes, search for anomalies within the dreams, and fix them. Okay. Oh, so it's like a Sounds chill. difference game. That's one of my specialties. <laughs> in the third okay. event, Shadow of the Night's Blade, the Knight of Flowers must eradicate evil on behalf of the Dendro Archon. Earn points by defeating as many enemies as possible within the time limit. Okay. You can even increase your performance level and earn buffs by satisfying special conditions during the challenge. Ah, uh, this should be yeah, a classic combat event. All right, good stuff. Bring it on. Ha, ha. Ha, oh, wow. Looks like someone's excited for the Subzerus festival. Uh, we got to go a bit I faster while they away. yapping. Hey, I'm sure they will. In addition to Nahida's birthday celebration, version 5.1 offers other exciting events. Okay, cool. In Feast of Pursuit, travelers will be able to earn rewards by completing various challenges. They can even choose their own difficulty setting. Oh, That's cool. cool. Each challenge comes with unique buffs. Use them wisely to clear the challenge as quickly as possible. You'll find tougher cool. and higher difficulty levels. In Reminiscent Regimen Thrill, travelers will team up with each other in co-op to tackle a challenge with four random stages. Each okay. challenge will feature different reminiscent reinforcements. Selecting a character that fits the reinforcements featured in each stage will make it easier to complete. Each player can choose a strengthening buff before entering a stage. You can give your team an advantage by choosing a buff that works with the specific stage design. It's all about optimizing your teamwork. <laughs> Absolutely. Magilla is so challenge, cool. I love the way she attacks. Like sure her attack animation, she, like she's so casual rewards. about it and I Maybe love it. The switch to challenges will also be added in version 5.1. Travelers will now be able to obtain echoes for Zhongli and Kuching. Whoa, Zhongli's echo is really cool. Ooh. Kuching's echo is also Kuching! She a trail of flowers behind her. Oh, that's so Whoa, cute. Excitement for our other updates. I haven't done those yet. A few familiar faces. Will new cards invocation tcg travelers can look forward to insane i need to play more of the tcg it looks fun cool version 5.1 is absolutely I'm just lazy about it to be honest There's even the aphid treasure trace event that we introduced at the beginning of the program that's not all. i did There's increase the play speed yes seen in a while wait do you mean that's right Lieben will be back in i was yapping too much like so it was taking like forever their items for like the video so far has been 20 minutes and uh i've been recording for like 40 minutes i'm just like man i'm so slow i keep yapping i need to shut the fuck up specific material will be available so we need to increase the speed Awesome. <laughs> that should be all for the version 5.1 events. That means it's about time for our second break. You got it. You got the we'll level 10? Right I'm like level 2.
Welcome back, travelers. It's time to jump into the system optimizations. Yes! First up, a that was in the dev talk. Essentially, what's going to happen uh, is that if you clear floor 11 or floor 12, you won't... Okay, so if you clear floor 11, you will you can start at floor 10. And if you cleared floor 12, you can start at floor 11, essentially. So that means that, like, if you cleared, like, high enough, you won't have to do floor 9 and 10. You can immediately get the reward when you finish floor 11, which is nice. It makes it faster. It's cool times. Change allows you to skip floor 9 in the new update if you obtain full stars on floor 11 of the previous Spiral Abyss. Obtaining full stars on floor 12 will allow you to skip both floor 9 and floor 10. There Hopefully it is. The rewards from the skipped floors will need to be claimed manually. Yep. The floor rewards such as domain reliquaries will be distributed automatically. Oh, this is so nice. I know it's dumb, but now you can actually get all the rewards from the domain reliquary at once. Like, you don't have to do one by one. You can pick to open all of them at once. It's a small thing, but she's crazy. It was so annoying. Addition, you can now open multiple yep, domain there it is. And sorting logic of the character artifact. You can also sort by okay. affix for an individual. Man, this is crazy how they're doing their best to not give us. Like, they're really trying their hardest to not give us artifact loadout. They keep making the experience and the filtering better. Just give us loadouts! You're getting there so slowly. Give us loadouts. It's not that hard. My God! Character ascension mechanics will also be optimized in version 5.1. You can now see the craftable amount of certain materials directly in your inventory. This is a nice. will also be added to the crafting bench that allows you to filter recipes by character ascension. Yes! Goals. So this is so cool. You can filter, you can essentially be like, okay, I want Jean to go to... Like, let's say your Jean is ascension 1. You can be like, okay, I want her to be ascension 6. And it will show you everything you need here. And you can even, like, automatically craft everything you need. This is really good. This will allow you to easily view and craft the number of materials that you need. Now, you don't have to calculate the required materials and quantities in advance. You can do all of that. And that is pretty cool. Right, I will say, right. hey, they keep doing good quality of life. I think the game is really going in a good direction. Some of you might have already noticed, but Genshin Impact turns four years old tomorrow. Yay! We've had an incredible We're getting 10 so free right? pulls. Insane. Let's see where this path has taken us. It's time to relive some amazing memories. Let's oh, do it. Okay, let's uh, play by speak. There we go. We got the cinematic. Okay. Ooh. Nice. I like the art style. It would be so cool if you were actually able to use all the elements at once in the in in game. Or like if you would be able to switch between elements. The passing memories. Okay. Oh. Woo! Music. I like the beeps and the boops. Remember when we did all of that, but it didn't actually happen? It was just in my mind? Yeah, that was crazy. I loved it. We're still just alone and sad. <laughs> See, sometimes it's rainy, sometimes it's cloudy, that's what journey means, can't Seen a head's blurry, but we still must pursue the dream. Travel through the heights and shallows. Ooh. Put on a sturdy shell to face the hop around. Ah. I hear about your last trace. Love is shining bright in the deep night. Stand up to find many times and know what's wrong or right. The scars will. Jesus, she goes high. The same as it was so cool with the uh, chlorine and Navia. That was a slick transition. Like this part? No, this she, she's just singing so high. That's a bridge or something. The only little part is a tattoo. I don't know what you mean. What tattoo? There's nothing to see here. I 
I, I just, man, I love the animation. Man, that would be crazy if we got like a Genshin anime. Wouldn't be. Wouldn't it be crazy if we got a, a Genshin anime? That'd be insane. The triple five star weapon was the first time I pulled the weapon scam buff. No, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Wait, did you at least get Nublet's weapon? Genshin's working on anime? Yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> Four years now? <laughs> Bad. This is Japanese version of the song. <gasps> oh, we're gonna listen to that 100%. Oh, the music is so good! Oh, Focalore. I say Focalore, but some people say Fossilore. I'm still heartbroken about Fossilore. Focalore. The Fossilessi. Was Garrett again? Dang, holy crap. That sucks. <laughs> Are you gonna be pulling for Gila then in the future when she comes out? What the hell? <gasps> Mavuika? That has to be Mavuika at the end there. 100%. Here's to four years of Genshin Impact. Yay! Hey, happy birthday! <laughs> Wow, it's already been four years. That's crazy. Where's the time gone? It really brings back so many memories when I see all those scenes. There's that Same guarantee for Gillette based. The battle uh, the I got a problem is that the weapon banner is actually looking absolutely incredible with both her weapon and uh, Shiri's weapon. So I'm just like, oh, maybe I'll try to pull for a weapon. Because regardless of which one I get, even if I lose the 50 50, I'll still be happy if I get Shiri's weapon. Gate chamber. Nahida saying goodbye to Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Oh man, stop breaking my heart! I know. Stop I'm it. definitely gonna have that song on repeat. That's exactly oh, what I did with the Natland Symphony. It's only the sad moments, dude. It seems like this is a good place to announce that Natland's first OST album, Land of Play Ayatol, is oh, about cool. to be released. The album contains three C1 discs C1 in C2 Nahida. You're gonna be pulling so much! For Genshin Impact. Yeah, Yay, I think I'll just um, I'll just shoot Shulin and then wait for my week out. Yes. You got right. sixty-seven pulls. Mm. That yeah. Looks like all the information. Sixty-seven pulls and a hope and a dream that means and a cope. It's time for the Prage, for real. To come to an end. Oh, it's cook over. Anything you want to say before we leave? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think there's so much cool content coming in this version, and hey, come on, fourth anniversary, that's so huge. Yeah. I mean, we've put so much work into this game over the years, and every version has been special, but I gotta say, 5.0, 5.1, these have been great. Exactly. I mean, True. seriously, Genshin Impact is is not only Poor money, a game bro. to me, it's my work, it's my life. <laughs> right. I play Genshin Impact every day, I talk about Genshin Impact I every play day, Genshin and I interact Impact with players every online, day. it's... All these years. Yeah, it's, it's crying. What a baby. It's a lot. Totally. Totally. If I have to say something this time. Yeah, we, we do get 10 pulls. True, 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 Are continue playing this game. And yeah. we are just as excited as you guys for what's coming next in the game. Yeah, awesome. me too. I'm yeah. excited for the no, story. Totally agree. That's so great. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, it's time for us to say goodbye. Once again, thank you so much for all of the support over these past four years. Hope to see you in game. Bye, everybody. Bye. Okay, uh, so overall, I would say the video was kind of cool. I'm super excited. Like this first, uh, the first trailer for the next patch, uh, I think went super hard. I think it gave us a lot of um, information and confirmation regarding like how the um... there was a signal for the masters of the night wind. So Aurora was indeed being threatened. Damn, she's so cool. We're already off to a rocky start. Yeah, they gave us some confirmation regarding like how the Night Kingdom functions and all that. I think that was absolutely amazing. Um, the banners are looking good. I'm going to check Twitter to see if they confirmed the four star on the banners because I'm very excited. We obviously are getting some quality of life, bonus gems from doing some stuff. And I think overall, this is great. The game has really gone to, is really going toward a good direction in my opinion. And I'm looking forward to, to see more of that. Hopefully some artifact loadouts in the future. And yeah, overall, I think this was a pretty good live stream. Uh, a lot of yapping, but you know, it is what it is. 
Um, but I enjoyed it. Let me know, YouTube folks, what did you think of this in the comments? All that good, good. And don't forget to catch me live at the, uh, what's the twitch.tv slash kitty All the good, good. Bye, 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 b